two, one, go. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Da Peng Li, and I'm uh, an assistant professor at South Dakota State University. Uh, I specialize in GIS and uh, its applications in hazards, public health, transportation, and uh, sustainability. Uh, today, I'm gonna present uh, one of my uh, recent project, which is uh, about mapping the certified GIS professional in, in the US. And uh, this study uh, was published uh, in a, as a, an open access journal article in the International Journal of Geoinformation this year. Uh, the outline for my presentation uh, is in this slide. Uh, first, I will uh, talk about uh, GIS certification, and then I will proceed to uh, introduce my study. Okay, so before I talk about the certification, uh, I want to mention professionalism. So uh, below is a list of uh, the criteria for defining a profession. Um, so in the early days, like in the 90s, uh, there were like a, a lot of discussions on whether GIS is a profession or not. But nowadays, it has been widely accepted that GIS is a profession because uh, we are able to meet the all the requirements nowadays. So uh, the past few decades have witnessed uh, the rapid development of GIS. And a study, uh, a report like uh, published by Boston Consulting Group in 2012 uh, says that the geospatial industry has about uh, 500,000 people in total in the US and generates an annual uh, re revenue of about 75 billion US dollars. And many people say that this is still an underestimate of the industry. Uh, this is also like, uh, Eight years ago, uh, for now, we should have more people working in this industry. And as a market, it should be much larger than 75 billion US dollars. Certification in GIS. Yeah. So we need to uh, distinguish certification from a certificate. A GIS certificate is usually a program at a university. So it is uh, composed of maybe several core courses in GIS. Uh, certification is uh, about cert professional development. So in, my, in most cases, a professional uh, needs to have like several years work experience before he or she could get uh, get certified. And the second way, certification is also different from accreditation. Accreditation applies to a university or a program, while certification applies to individuals. And uh, lastly, GIS certification is voluntary. Uh, this is very different from the uh, land survey uh, license in the US. Yeah. For a land surveyor, if he or she wants to work legally, uh, the person has to get the license first from the state government and is uh, managed by the governments. Uh, however, GIS certification is voluntary, which means even if you don't have a certification, you could still work on GIS. Uh, GIS certification has many benefits yeah, uh, for our profession and for uh, stakeholders or companies or even for uh, individuals. Uh, for example, the first one, uh, a certification could help us define who is qualified to do GIS. Because there are so many different programs in the US, so many different uh, GIS programs or GIS related programs. Uh, all the graduates could have a different, totally different skill sets. So it's very important that we have a certification program to ensure that we are all on the same page. And the second, uh, a certification could like provide a baseline for comparison of one person's qualities uh, against another one, especially like uh, across, we could do so across international boundaries. Third, uh, GS certific certification could uh, raise the salary of GS professionals. And the last, uh, for those outsiders, especially those who don't have a 
JS related uh, background or degree. Uh, if they are they want to do GIS, certification could be very helpful to them. So there are many uh, GIS related certification programs in the world. Our study will uh, focus on the uh, GSP certification program, which is managed by the GISCI, which is a nonprofit third party organization. And in the US, we'll also have a Certif the certified Mapping Scientist per, uh, Certification Program from uh, ASPRS. In Canada, they have a, uh, another program called uh, the Geomatics Specialist Certification. And uh, in Australia and New Zealand, they also have their own certification program. Okay, so I will uh, uh, talk about the GSP certification program before I uh, cover my study. my study. So this program was initiated in 2004. And now it's managed by uh, a third party organization, the GISCI. As of January 2019, this program has about uh, 9,000 people, members in the US. Yeah. Before you could get the certification, uh, you need to meet several requirements. The first one is a professional portfolio review. This has like several components, including educational achievement, professional experience, and contributions to the profession. So the review process is based on a point system. You need to reach a certain points, uh, cert a certain like level before you could pass the review. Yeah. And uh, second, each applicant needs, needs to pass the exam. And lastly, each applicant has to sign a code of ethics. So the GSP uh, certification program is the most popular one in the US and in the world for now. Uh, however, if we compare it with other like popular certification programs in other disciplines, we could see like, yeah, we still have a long way to go. For example, the PMP yeah, certification program According to its website, it has like over 1 million members across the globe. So it is super popular in many countries. And the literature review, uh, some studies have been done on this topic on the GSP certification program. Uh, in the early, early research focused on discussions yeah, on how we could do a develop and uh, like, uh, design and develop a certification program in GIS. And later, uh, WICO 2014, uh, he used uh, the data from several certification programs and did some like analysis. And a, a most recent like study was done by Matthews and WICO in 2017. And they did a survey of about uh, 1,700 GSPs. And the findings are very interesting. For example, they found that most people have uh, a college degree or uh, a graduate degree. And 93% uh, of the respondents hold positions in the US. And uh, most, maybe uh, half of the people uh, believe that, agree that uh, this uh, certification program is uh, well known among the employers. And 21% uh, of them disagree with this argument. And this slide shows the characteristics they analyzed in their survey. Yeah, it includes uh, age, education, major, job title, industry, and income information. And they also mapped out the uh, workplace locations of those like GSPs in the US. And in our study, we aim to like uh, analyze the individual levels uh, characteristics, including uh, gender, job title, and the employer of all the certified GSPs in the US. That is the whole population. Yeah. And map out the information at the state level. And the second, we also employ a special analysis to examine the special distribution of the uh, patterns of the GSPs at the, state, at, the, at the state level and identify the hotspots and the cold spots in the US. So the novelty is like threefold. First, we are using the whole population, yeah, the 
GSP registry data. And the second, we employ a data-driven approach. We also use other types of data in our analysis. And lastly, we performed a spatial analysis to examine the spatial patterns of the GSP. And uh, the data we used in this study include, uh, besides the registry, registry data, we also used uh, zip code zone data from uh, SRI and the county and the state boundary data. And uh, uh, lastly, we also used the urbanized area and the urban clusters uh, boundary data from census. So the GSP registry data, it includes like many items in here. We used the first name, title, comp company, state, zip code, uh, country information in our, in our analysis. So the first step, we did the data aggregation. So basically we aggregated the data, the, num uh, the number of GSPs uh, at different, uh, different spatial scales. For example, uh, we counted the number of GSPs for each zip code zone and for each country, for each state. And uh, once we, we, then we used the zip, zip code zone layer to, overlay, to intersect the uh, urbanized areas and urban, urban clusters there to derive the uh, GSP count for urban areas and rural areas in the US. And uh, for gender classification, we used a uh, Python and uh, the genderize.io API to uh, generalize the GSPs based on their first names. And uh, this slide shows the, an example of the API. So in this example, we give the API Peter and it returns the gender information and the probability of the, uh, the result. And the count in here, uh, refers to the, uh, uh, denotes the popularity of the name. And uh, the third step is to analyze the job titles and the employers. Uh, we, for the job title classif uh, analysis, we first classify the job titles into two groups. Uh, group one is uh, the GSPs with administrative uh, roles and group two, non-administrative roles. And then we further classified the uh, second group into several subgroups, yeah, including GS developer, GS analyst, and others. And uh, this cl classification could uh, reflect what type of jobs people do. For employer analysis, uh, we categorize the GSPs into three groups academic institutions, government agencies, and, uh, and other types, which include companies or uh, nonprofit organizations. Because it's very difficult to distinguish these two groups based on uh, their names. So that's why we use this like a classification scheme. Finally, for spatial analysis, we employ the global Barnes eye analysis and uh, to uh, examine spatial autocorrelation uh, and the overall clustering. And we also employed the geostatistics to uh, identify the hotspots and the cold spots or the GSPs at the state level. And the results, uh, first country level aggregation. And we could see that the US uh, has the yeah, largest number of GSPs in the world. Most of the GSPs there are in the US, like about 90 94%. And Canada has about 4.5%. And all other countries have uh, only have like 2%. So the aggregated results at the state level, the states they are ranked by the number of GSPs. And in here in this figure, the size of the uh, polygon uh, denotes the number of GSPs. We could see that the Florida has the uh, largest number of GSPs among all the states, followed by uh, California and uh, Texas. And New York is like in here. We could see that maybe New York, this program is not very popular in New York. 
and we could like maybe further promote this program in New York. So number of GSPs in urban and rural areas. In urban areas, uh, urban areas have about 97% of the GSPs. Yeah. And the rural areas only have uh, close to like 3%. Yeah. And we could see that most of the jobs or most of the GS professionals they are working in urban areas, yeah. either in urbanized areas or in urban clusters. Gender analysis. Um, overall, uh, we managed to classify 97% uh, of the GSPs. So, so like unclassified uh, GSPs, they are they have like foreign names in most cases. And uh, gender composition. So among the 97% 90, 90, uh, GSPs, uh, about over like 70% are male and uh, close to like 30% they are female. And uh, the map on the right shows the uh, proportion of male GSPs in each state. And we could see that some states they have like a super uh, large like proportion. And we could, we need to further maybe examine the uh, gender inequality like within this uh, certification program in the states. So for uh, job title analysis, we used the keywords in this table to identify those GSPs that have uh, that play administrative like roles. And uh, the results are shown in this slide. Uh, about 43% 40, of the GSPs play uh, managerial roles. 55% uh, play non-managerial roles. And as other two percent, they don't have any uh, job title information at all. For those like non-administrative like uh, GSPs, most of them they are GS analyst type uh, professionals. That's sixty-eight uh, percent. For GS developers, only they only like uh, they are only like seven percent. And we could, on the right in the map, we could see the uh, ratio of the GSPs with an administrative role in each state. So this map has like, could have implications for those people who are looking for jobs, jobs because in those like uh, states with dark colors, it's very likely that those supervisors will uh, uh, prefer to recruit those people with a GSP certification. And the number of uh, GSPs with a developer type job title in each state, and we could see that most uh, <clears throat> most of the developers they are in uh, the states like uh, Texas or the Washington DC area and Florida. And uh, also another pattern is that on the West Coast, so the states they have like more developers than like so uh, the states in the Midwest. And this figure uh, gives us a detailed information for uh, job titles in each state. Yeah. And we could see like the states like uh, Texas and uh, North Carolina, uh, Florida and Colorado, they have like more like GS develop developers. And uh, for the like em employer analysis, so it turns out like most uh, 40, 41 percent of the GSPs work for in, uh, work for government agencies, and which is a uh, super high. Uh, Forty seven of the GSPs work for companies or nonprofit organizations. Only five percent of the GSPs work in academia, and the other seven uh, percent they don't have any. Uh, employer information in in their registry, and on the right it shows the uh, uh, detailed information for each state. And finally, for the spatial analysis, yeah. 
we run the Marans I analysis. It, it, uh, the global Marans I index is a uh, zero point uh, thirty file. The so expected uh, index is uh, minus point uh, oh two, and the Z code is four point one. And the results show that uh, yeah, the, uh, the distribution of the JSPs is uh, clusters, clustered at the state level in the US. To further like, identify the <coughs> hotspots and the cold spots, we performed the, <coughs> we performed the uh, geostatistics analysis. And the results are shown in, in the map. And we could see that. Uh, Oh, so the map in the, in the right shows the number of GSPs in the in the US, and we used the data to perform G statistics uh, statistics, and we could see like the states in the American West they have larger ratios, yeah. And another like region is in the Washington D.C. area, like uh, Virginia and uh, Maryland, yeah. They have also they also have like larger ratios, and in in the mid Midwest, like in here, in the Great Plains, those states they have like low ratios. It means it's not very popular in the in these states. And another area is the uh, New England area and New York. They have like low ratios. California is also relatively low uh, in terms of the number of GSPs per ten thousand people. I think that is because uh, they have a super large population. And meanwhile, the GSP certification is not that popular yeah. when compared with other states like Texas and Florida. And the results of the local G statistics uh, analysis show that, uh, like in here, yeah, hot spot, uh, there are many hot, hot spots in here, yeah, in the American West. Yeah. And another one is uh, around the Washington, D.C. area. And the cold spots, Wines in here in this region, and we could see those states. Uh, it's not very popular. If we go back to this map, yeah, it's not very popular in terms of the uh, number of GSPs per ten thousand people. And another like cold spot is in this region, like New York and the New England area. And the discussion, yeah, our study like. Uh, Shows that it's um, it remains a challenge to like incorporate all aspects of the GIS in the GSP certification program. For example, the exam component. Uh, most of, although it covers like both a uh, developer and uh, analyst type questions, but I mean these two types of uh, job titles, those people they those professionals they will uh, do totally different like. Uh, Jobs in there, yeah, and uh, the the responsibilities they are totally different, yeah. and it's very challenging to like incorporate like uh, everything into like one program. And uh, second, it's very important for us to maybe better integrate uh, GIS with subject matters in GIS education, uh, because many companies or uh, agencies they are looking for those professionals that know GIS and subject matters at the, at the same time. And it's very challenging to like include the subject matters into uh, in, in our GS certification program. And the third, we need to do more research to further examine the relationship between GS higher education and the GSP certification program. And lastly, we need to do more research to further like uh, promote, figure out how to further promote the GS certification programs in the US. <clears throat> Conclusion, our study has many implications. First, it can help us develop a better understanding of the GSP uh, program. And second, our study could provide like, valuable information to GS uh, educators when they propose, develop, or improve their GS programs or curricula. And the third, this study is very useful to those who intend to like become just professionals in the future. And lastly, this study could help bridge the education and the workforce divide. So uh, although this study has a, um, a lot of like novelty, it also has like several limitations. First, 
it relies on the GSP registry data. And thus, it's uh, our study is restricted to a few characteristics. Yeah. So if we are to use a survey-based uh, method, we will be able to like examine more characteristics, but that won't be the whole population in this case. And uh, another limitation is that we, uh, we were not able to like uh, include the characteristics of the GS jobs or employers in the US. Actually, we don't have this kind of information for now. And uh, uh, one potential like uh, method is to use like big data to derive the, uh, the like characteristics of GS jobs and uh, employers in the US. For example, we could use the data from the job posting websites like Indeed to study this topic in the future. Okay, so I'm done with my presentation. Any questions? Thank you.